That's a Gaudi View live that I've got. Thanks for joining us again, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, the local Terminator, rugged and built like Schwarzenegger, John Arheides. And today we have lots of the latest and greatest in Hudson County news like every week. So first of all, something that you guys may have seen earlier is that one of the top Hudson County health officials revealed in an exclusive interview that the COVID-19 vaccine may be on the way here throughout New Jersey a lot sooner than we were thinking. So obviously that's something that we want to discuss. We're going to talk about more COVID-19 testing throughout Jersey City. And we are also going to have some discussion here with Jersey City Freeholder Bill O'Day, who is sitting right next to me and will join us right after the commercial break. Certainly, we're going to be talking about the correctional facility, the ICE detention center, and the related contract, and much more. And before we do that, we're just going to have one word, quick word from our sponsors. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, Jersey City. Hudson County's only monument maker, serving all faiths and cemeteries. Design studio and launch inventory on site. Cemetery inscriptions and custom orders welcome. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, just south of Seacorkers Road. Craftsmanship that will last for all eternity. Burns Brothers, Jersey City, Albert H. Hopper, North Arlington. Visit us on the net. Consumer Carpets, 3408 Kennedy Boulevard in the Jersey City Heights, your one-stop store for residential and commercial floor treatments. Carpeting, linoleum, tiles, laminates, hardwood floors, area rugs, remnants, all major brands, all in stock. Free estimates, same-day installation. Consumer Carpets, it's savings, selection, installation. Credit cards and debit cards accepted. Financing available. Consumer Carpets, price to fit your budget, installation to fit your schedule. On the net at ConsumerCarpets.com. Consumer Carpets, Jersey City, 201-792-2712. Good Friends Self Storage in North Bergen, New Jersey is a fully climate controlled facility equipped with state-of-the-art security, packing supplies, a refer friend program, and multiple loading docks convenient for commercial use. Located just off of Route 3 at 4301 Tunnelly Avenue, Route 1 and 9. Call 201-867 2444 or visit us on the web today. Good friend self storage. Let us be your good friend. That's it, Gaddy View, live at Uncut. I'm your host, John Arhitis, and as promised, I'm joined with Jersey City Freeholder Bill O'Day. Freeholder, thanks for coming in. My pleasure, my pleasure. All right, excellent. So, obviously, the big issue, needless to tell you, is uh, this contract with U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, obviously known as ICE. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, this is something that we've heard in 2018. The county executive talked about phasing it out. And uh, those people that don't support the federal law enforcement agencies were looking forward to that. Now we're obviously almost at the end of 2020, and it seems that there's a reasonable probability that the free owners are going to take a vote on this thing and renew the contract. So have you heard anything new since last week's meeting? Um, not really. As you know, John, I oppose the extension of 2018. Uh, I've publicly stated I'm going to oppose any extension this year. Uh, I think they're still analyzing it. You know, part of the problem is, is that the steps that they wanted to take to eliminate the necessity to renew the contract, they weren't able to get done. And some of it's not to any fault of their own. Mercer County, which probably would have resolved the issue, uh, has been in court. And with the pandemic, court actions are slower and slower and slower and more delayed. So my only conversations is that I guess they're looking at the fiscal um, assessment of if they don't renew the contract, how it's going to impact their budget. Because they've lost some of the other argument. Uh, as you, you saw, the letter from the attorneys from New York that represent them, who last time said, no, no, renew the contract, is now kind of, we're not involved. Right, we're going to stay neutral. We're staying neutral, but it was kind of neutral saying getting out of it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you don't get out of it, we'll still represent people, but we're for, you know, less, less uh, people being held, held captive. So. Right. 
Well, with that, you know, there was a time where people said, and I think it was just two years ago, that this could net up to $18 million in revenue. I think some even said over 20 at one point. Uh, but at the current time, based on what the head of corrections, Ron Edwards, said, that there's only 79 detainees, so that comes out to approximately three and a half million, right? Yeah, yeah. so the numbers, yeah, that's, I mean, the other side of the argument that was made then is that the loss of revenue was so substantial. 18 million, maybe the net was 14 million. Now the net might be $3 million or less. Finding $3 million in a budget, absorbing $3 million for a short period, because you know, I still believe that the Mercer County issue will get resolved. Uh, you know, we should be going to, to Phil Murphy, who's done a lot of programs to release more individuals from correctional centers. Um, we were supposed to do a program with state inmates that were a year from release that wanted to get involved in a, a, a substance abuse assistance program that we set up there. If we get 50, 60 of those individuals, then we have no need for this anymore. Right. Now, another part of the argument, uh, you know, this was all told in excruciating detail at last week's meeting, but just for those that may not have seen, another part of the argument was that this is actually beneficial for the families and council that live in this area because there's the possibility they could get deported, you know, Almost anywhere, whether right. it's Texas, Alabama, right. et cetera. So what do you think about that possible uh, aspect of the argument here? I, th I think that argument doesn't exist anymore. I think that there's no chance that any of those individuals will be moved far away. They'll be moved to other facilities in the area, especially now that we're going to have President Biden. I can't imagine a Democratic president who in part owes his victory to supports of progressives, suddenly going to say we're going to take individuals if you don't have a place from here and ship them 2,000 miles away. I can't see that. I just can't see that happening. I think what would happen is less individuals will wound up being taken off the streets and detained. I think that you'll find out that the less places to detain them, the less individuals that are going to be rounded up, taken in, and detained. And I think that, that that's the most powerful argument I heard last week in listening to the advocates. I was like, hey, you know what, this makes sense. If you only have 300 places that they can be housed for 300 people instead of 500, then they got to only have 300. Because, you know, when looking at it, you know, there's issues where individuals that actually have permanent status in this country but get a DUI, lose that status and can get deported. I'm not so sure that's, that's the, the, the America I believe in. So I, I think that that is key. I don't, I don't see that happening. I don't think anyone on our board can make that argument when you're going to have Joe Biden as the President of the United States come January. So with that, uh, Freeholder, we heard from, again, a lot of advocates, probably 100 or so, and they said, you know, they, in putting it nicely, they weren't impressed with Obama's record, they weren't impressed right. with Trump's record, they don't think Biden is going to be any better. What, what do you think about that narrative? So I, I think he'll be better. I don't think Biden is going to walk in day one and let everyone out. Um, but he's going to be better than Trump. And I don't think he's going to do as many roundups and brag about it the way Trump is. And I also think that there will be programs in place to assist more individuals that even get taken in to find a way to get released and stay in the country. All right, on that for we're just gonna take a quick break sure. from our sponsors, we'll be right back. The Jersey City Medical Center, you know it for its award-winning, life-saving ambulance service, it's also your health hub, with health and wellness locations staffed with certified professionals all through Hudson County. The Jersey City Medical Center, here to help you with your healthy, here when you need us the most. The Jersey City Medical Center. Visit us on the net to learn more. Jersey City Medical Center, Robert Wood Johnson, Barnabas Health Facility. Let's be healthy together. Newport, the luxury waterfront community on the Hudson River, offers a quality of life you deserve in 10 high-rise rental towers with amenities such as the on-site Newport Path subway, light rail and ferry service, Newport Town Square, three playgrounds, dog run, upscale restaurants, 
retail giants like Sears, JCPenney, Macy's, and Target. Morton Williams Supermarket is just outside your front door. A health and fitness club, spa, skating rink, and medical facilities are also on site. NewportNJ.com Enjoy the New York skyline from Newport Town Square. Manhattan is just one path stop away or quick ride through the Holland Tunnel. Nursery and private elementary schools all on site. 12 screen movie theater at the Newport Center Mall. Want to visit Newport? Stay at the Western or Marriott Hotel. Go to NewportNJ.com for details. Newport has luxurious towers, great restaurants, shopping, New York skyline views, schools, playgrounds, a marina and yacht club, gym, spa, fine wine, fine living. It's incredible. It's you. NewportNJ.com. Newport, Slow live down. like you want. Hudson County View, live at Uncut. Chad Arheidas, and we're still here with Jersey City Free Older Bill O'Day. So, Free Older, the last thing on this topic. So, at the meeting, we uh, saw people that were very passionate about this issue, which of course you're used to, but uh, there was a lot of criticism, heavy criticism of the jail. The most common theme was that it's a concentration camp, and there was other language as well, but you get the picture, you remember. What do you, th but you made a point, as other free olders did, to say that they've made big strides at this correctional facility in Cardi in the past three or four years. So why did you feel like that had to be put on the record? Because it's true. There's been a lot of good reforms and improvements at that facility. I can be against renewing an ICE contract, but have to acknowledge that the medical facilities there are so much better. The psychiatric services provided are so much better. The quality of the food has improved. Programs available for individuals that are there um, have improved. We're, we're Wi-Fiing the entire building. So any inmate or detainee is going to have access to even virtual learning. So you really can't make that argument. The, the argument against the ICE contract is just, it's ideologically wrong to take individuals that are here who may have done nothing wrong but to come here. Think about it. You could have come here when you're 10 years old with your parents. Technically, you came here illegally, but you're 10 years old. Now you're 20 years old whatever, you get stopped for a traffic ticket, suddenly you're going to be able to be held and deported, it doesn't make any logical sense. Understood, for your older so. But the facility has made great improvements. Uh, we continue to stay on top of it. We've increased the spending on medical and psychiatric services. We've increased the spending on the food, food services, you know, for each individual, that's that. That speaks for itself. All right, <clears throat> very good. Now on a different topic. So something that kind of got lost in the shuffle here, just because you know we were talking about this for so many hours that night, was that several employees from the Division of uh, Family Services in Hudson County said they were concerned about uh, sick leave, they were concerned about the number of positive COVID tests and the way that it was being handled at the Hudson County Plaza, as well as you know the other floors of the same building. So have you heard any more about that? Or could you give us any color? So all I would say is that it's an ongoing concern. I think that never more than two days go by when I don't see an email that tells me one person working in this, maybe two people in that building testing positive, someone at sheriff's, today I saw one sheriff officer tested positive, one individual at the correctional facility tested positive. I mean, the second wave's here. Let's, let's not sugarcoat it. Um, so it's an issue, and, and the county needs to stay on top of how they address it. We need to be sensitive to employees. Um, if, you know, any employee that is at a high risk should be allowed to get paid and not go to work. If we have to get them a laptop, whatever we do, we have to protect. Look, we made mistakes as a government, state government, and not properly protected all the vulnerable populations in the beginning. I mean, with my nonprofit, South Hudson, we were delivering food to seniors early, early on, out of our own pockets, before there was care money or anything else, because we knew that those individuals were at risk. So the ability to identify those individuals that are at risk and keep them out of harm's way is something that we have to do, because it's here, and it's going to be here for a while. It's not going anywhere. Sure, absolutely. And I mean, on that point, we uh, saw a press conference this morning with Mayor Fulop and Director Flanagan, Director Shea. And they told us about the new testing, which includes rapid tests and, of course, also includes South uh, Hudson South Civic. South Hudson's one of the testing sites, yes. So could you just tell us about those hours of operation, what kind of tests, how they could get results, any other information yeah, you have they, available? So they're not the rapid, rapid tests. I believe they'll get the results in two days, 48 hours. 
uh, which really isn't fast enough, let's be honest, but we've got to live with what we've got. Uh, our, our operations are um, Saturday, Friday, Thursday. Uh, they open from 1 to 6 p.m. Uh, they, all these things are done by appointment only. And what's that address? Uh, it's 546 West Side Avenue. It's on the corner of West Side and Lexington, directly behind the library. And I know, uh, you know, the nonprofit group that you're a part of, that we've been speaking of here, you know, you guys are always really active during the holiday season, as, you know, we've just been talking about the second wave's obviously here. So could you just tell us how that's going to impact what you're doing and what you're going to have on your calendar for the next month and a half yeah. or so? So we are doing um, turkey giveaway and gift card giveaway. Um, we are not able to get as many turkeys as we usually get. We're supposed to pick up 500 or 550 on Saturday. A lot of those turkeys get given out to groups that cook meals that they then distribute um, to large, to, you know, to, to larger populations, people in need, homeless populations, things like that. Uh, but others go out to individuals, uh, public housing, and, and other locations. So that'll be done. We probably doing four or five hundred gift cards, which would be for Shoprite. For those that didn't get a turkey, we'll be able to get it. Very careful about how we distribute it. PPE, social distancing. We're taking extra special steps with that. As we look forward to the holiday Christmas, we used to do breakfast with Santa Claus for so many years. We're now working out the details of kind of a drive through So literally, cars will line up. We're probably looking to do it in the west side end of Lincoln Park. We get your person, what are the ages of the children? Car drives up. Santa could go to the side of the car, take a picture. Kids get their toys. So. We're adapting. We did it. We did a, a very small socially distanced Halloween party uh, at the top of Lincoln Park on on, uh, on Halloween Day. So, some of these traditions have been going on so long. We don't want to. Uh, we don't want to end up. The Halloween one's gone on, including through the year that we had Sandy, because it was literally the Saturday before Halloween, and it was the only Halloween celebration. Because once Sandy hit, obviously, we were we were knocked out for like a good week. Very good. Thank you. Pre-older, really appreciate the All time. Right. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure, John. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching. We're not done yet. We're going to take a quick break. We'll see you shortly. Most women who give birth recover without problems, but any woman can have complications after the birth of a baby. Learn the post-birth warning signs, such as fever, headache, chest pain, shortness of breath, increased bleeding, or thoughts of hurting yourself or someone else. Knowing these can save your life or the life of someone that you love. Trust your instincts. If you feel something is wrong, call and get evaluated by your healthcare provider. If your symptoms get worse or you do not hear back from your physician, call 911 or go to the nearest emergency room. RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. Pen and Pencil Properties, Jersey City. Shape in the workplace with state-of-the-art office spaces that address your company desires. Building residences that define your home environment, adjacent to all modes of transportation with on-site parking available. The right address, the right lease. Call 201-521-9000 or visit online at panapintoproperties.com. Panapinto Properties, building Jersey City for everyone. You know those times when you need to see the doctor, but you just can't get to the doctor? So where do you go? Go to the App Store, download the Telemed app from RWJ Barnabas Health, and you see the doctor right away, from any mobile device, whenever you want, wherever you are. Quality care, no appointment necessary. The doctor is online when you download the Telemed app. Don't you feel better already? RWJ Barnabas Health, let's be healthy together. Hudson County View live at Uncut, John, Our Highness. So, as I mentioned at the top of the program, I wanted to talk a little bit uh, about some really statewide relevant news. I mean, maybe even larger, but at least statewide news. I had a chance to talk to Janet Castro earlier this week, and you guys may know that she is the health officer at North Bergen, Weehawken, Guttenberg, Secaucus, Union City, and Harrison. And the most relevant thing, at least in my humble opinion, was that she said the COVID-19 vaccine may be available as soon as mid to late January. Now, of course, you know, everyone's not going to be able to get in line and receive the vaccine all at once. It's going to be administered in phases. But as far as that goes, let me, you know, first of all, just give you a little bit of uh, detail, some color, and then I'm actually going to show you a clip of uh, our interview, which occurred on Zoom. So 
she said that uh, we're anticipating actually receiving shipments as early as late December to begin distributing as early as January, mid to late January. And we administer these vaccines, we need to prioritize them, essential workers, healthcare workers, immunocompromised, elderly populations, and then it will just be the general population. Now children are not part of that general population just yet, just because of the risk of COVID in children is still relatively small. Of course, I could tell you a lot more, but again, I wanna show you that clip. Something interesting though, uh, on a related note, is uh, I don't know how many of you follow the Rutgers Eagleton Polling Center, Research Center, but they did a poll on the same day, actually, the morning of, that was uh, November 17th, and they said actually about four in 10 New Jerseyans are unsure if they would take the COVID vaccine, at least uh, really more of a lean towards no. And the reason for that is they're not comfortable due to concerns about side effects and, a lack of, and or a lack of information. And the reason that all these conversations have spurned, I'm sure everyone who sees this is well aware that we've had successful trials from both Moderna and Pfizer, where they had an over 90% success rate in both instances. So other than that, you know, let me just tell you a little bit about our conversation that is not in the clip you're gonna see. So you're well aware, you know, as I talked about with the freeholder just now, that we're in, well in the second wave. So I talked to uh, Mrs. Castro here about what does this mean for schools and what does this mean about a second shutdown? And here's what she said. So she said, I think right now after the holidays, we'll probably see that sometime in January, speaking of a shutdown. Listen, it's pretty unpredictable, but that's what I'm assuming. The cases are rising steadily now. I can't even imagine what they'll be like another month and a half from now. And then as far as what's happening with the school, she said, I think that may happen a bit before the governor implements his orders. The reason for this is we tend to see a lot of staff essentially getting sick and it's inevitable. Once you bring in the children, that will only get more complex. Uh, now, before I go into the clip, uh, on a vaguely related note, well, more than vaguely, a very related note in Jersey City, they have unveiled a number of testing sites. So just quickly wanted to bring that up. The Merritt Boulevard site that's been there uh, for many months, I believe since March, that the walk-up nasal test is still open. Um, they have one in Journal Square where the press conference was today. That's at uh, Sip Avenue. And there's one on West Side Avenue. There's also one that's coming to Central Avenue with the Heights, of course. and. There's a Bethune Center saliva test, and there's a rapid testing site at United Way, which is 857 Bergen Avenue. With that, we're going to lead you back into what I was talking about, my interview with Janet Castro. We're going to hear from her, and then we're going to take a commercial break. We are anticipating actually receiving, um, receiving uh, shipments as early as late December uh, to begin distributing as early as uh, January mid to late January, yeah, to get the vaccine. Like mass population? So no, we're gonna start in phases, right? You know, so there, there are different phases uh, that we need to implement. When we administer these vaccines, we need to, we need to prioritize them. Healthcare workers, essential workers, um, immunocompromised uh, elderly population, and then it will be the general population. So now children are not part of that general population just yet, um, just because the risk of COVID in children is still relatively uh, small. So um, the ambitious goal, it's, it's, it's gonna be a challenging program, but um, the plan includes uh, vaccinating 70% 7, of our population, of our communities within, um, within six months time. So it, it's quite an ambitious number, um, you know, but, but we're, we're getting ready for it and, and we're, um, we're trusting that, you know, the state will, will provide us with plenty of guidance uh, to get that done. You know, and then we, we, we need buy-in from our, our communities, right? From our, um, our elected officials, which, you know, at least around in my municipalities, they're all on board, um, you know, with assisting to, to set up these, these dispensing sites. Um, and that's it. We move on from there and, and partner with as many facilities as we possibly can to, to get, the vaccine, um, get the vaccine out there. You know, we've heard some really positive news, you know, that, you know, the vaccines are 90 to 95% effective. So that is much better than we anticipated, much better than the flu vaccine. Stevens Jersey City Ford, located right off of NJ 440 North. Across the Hudson Mall is your one stop for all your automotive needs. Check out Ford's latest models like the 2020 Ford Fusion with its stylish looks and hybrid options, or the unparalleled high performance 2020 Ford Mustang. The 2020 Ford F-150 Raptor is ready for those rugged off-road terrains with trail control. 
Need a mid-sized truck for your towing and hauling? The 2020 Ford Ranger will deliver. The 2020 Ford Escape is a luxury SUV that was made for comfort and adventure on the go. Returning is Ford's legendary Bronco, which takes you back to the true meaning of off-roading. They are now available for pre-order in our showroom or on our website. Let us help you find your next vehicle. Stevens Jersey City Ford, 201-432-7272. Hudson County View, live at Uncut, John Our Highness. So before we go any further, I just wanted to take this time to offer our condolences to the Imperator family. We all learned this morning that Arthur E. Imperator Sr. passed away after a battle with a log on disclosed illness. He was 95 years old. While he has been a staple in Hudson County for nearly seven decades, everybody knows him as the founder and the president of New York Waterway, which has been headquartered in Weehawken since 1986. So again, our condolences to the Imperator family. Obviously a big loss. With that, we're going to stick with Hoboken and uh, we're actually gonna continue talking a bit about COVID-19 and some safety precautions. So Hoboken, as you guys know, as no stranger to getting out in front of uh, safety measures to rig this public health emergency. And one thing that they're now doing is they're going to have some businesses sign in and out to bolster their COVID-19 contract tracing program. So let me tell you a little bit about what's going on here. So Mayor Ravi Bala said, I'm extremely appreciative to have the majority of businesses for taking the necessary health precautions to keep both their employees and customers safe. It has been a very challenging time for our small business owners, but above all else, I know they care about the health and safety of our community. Despite these best efforts, unfortunately, the Hoboken Health Department has reported an uptick of in employees of local businesses, including bars and restaurants, testing positive for COVID-19. So, of course, the most common question about this story was who is going to be participating in the signing in and who is not? Well, they did, uh, they did answer that question. By the way, this is not a mayor executive order. This is an order coming from the Hoboken Office of Emergency Management. Uh, with that said, those establishments that are going to be asked to do the sign in are the ones that have high levels of contact with their patrons. So what exactly that means are restaurants, bars, gyms, wellness establishments, fitness studios, salons, and health clubs. Some of the businesses that'll be excluded include delivery services, grocery stores, bodegas, retail stores, dry cleaners, and really anywhere where you could come and do your business basically as a drop and go. So anyone that has any questions uh, could talk to health department at hobokenedj.gov. That's an email at hoboken, excuse me, health department at hobokenedj.gov. And I have one more that got quite a bit of attention statewide, but um, I was actually expecting a little more engagement on the website, so I just wanted to go through what's happening with the Attorney General and Academy Bus, which is also based out of the Mile Square City. The long story short is New Jersey Attorney General Gubir Graywall has filed a lawsuit against Academy, alleging that they've defrauded NJ Transit out of $15 million, so obviously a pretty serious allegation that is now in Essex County Superior Court. So let's talk a little bit about what exactly this means. The lawsuit says Academy engaged in an extensive multi-year, multi-million dollar fraud by failing to report tens of thousands of missed bus trips between April 2012 and December 2018. According to the AG's office, the case is the highest dollar value whistleblower lawsuit in which the state has ever intervened. So, Specifically, uh, Gural came out uh, in a statement and said, most of us know how frustrating it, it can be to wait for a bus that doesn't show up on time or never appears at all. Our complaint against Academy Bus alleges that one reason for those late and missing buses has been a pervasive multi-year fraud by Academy that not only cost riders their time, but also cost NJ Transit many millions of dollars. With this lawsuit, we are seeking justice for the riding public as well as New Jersey taxpayers. So far, we have not heard any public comment from Academy. I did reach out to a representative there via email. I've yet to hear back. If we do hear anything from their counsel or from their employees, we will certainly let you know. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to bid you adieu. It's been another week. I was, it's always a pleasure. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Stay safe.